All right, let's go ahead and do this. Howdy, howdy, y'all. Uh, welcome to the uh, inaugural stream of Semantics. My name is Ben Myers. I am a front-end developer with a passion for web accessibility. Semantics is a weekly stream uh, focused on web accessibility, semantic markup, progressive enhancement, and the like. Um, I'm really, really excited for this experiment. Um, and with us for our, our first stream is my, my good friend, Anthony. Uh, Anthony, hello. Hey, Ben. How you doing? Doing all right. Um, a little over caffeinated, but you know we're making do. Um, I think I'm yeah. appropriately caffeinated. I got the I got the right levels going right okay, now. Okay, I, I need to know your secrets. You what what is the right amount of caffeine? So my my secret is I don't drink coffee. I okay. just take a caffeine pill in the morning, so uh, I get the okay. same amount every single time. <laughs> so and, you know, I just do drink nine more cups. If you go like into your like friendly neighborhood Walmart or whatever and go into like the drink mixes aisle, they have like um like energy packets. They're like they're they're the fruit flavored drink mixes that you would like stir into your water. But um they're they're caffeinated. And this is y'all the best life hack. Um besides your yeah, caffeine I'm, habits. I'm super happy to to be here and to get to like kick this off and get the semantics going because you've really helped me out a lot in terms of learning like what accessibility is how to think about making accessible websites and mm -hmm. i talk a lot about how i feel like this is something that was very poorly taught <laughs> to myself as a boot camp student like and by that i mean it wasn't taught at all like we were specifically told at one point that they were not going to teach us accessibility in the boot camp but that we should probably learn it on our own because we're going to be tested on it in like interview questions Amazing. so to me that just seemed like a, an admission of failure on on the school's part because we talk so much about how these things are important and how developers should know these things that we don't enable them to actually do it. We don't enable them with the knowledge or the tools or, or any of that. So that's why uh, when I heard Ben was interested in doing this, I was like, yeah, sign me up. Like, let's do this. Absolutely. Um, and, and you work on, on something that's, that's really cool, which is Redwood. Um, do you want to kind of give us the, like, my impression of Redwood from what I've heard, like, if I could summarize it in, like, three words, is it's React on Rails. Right, but you're on the core team, and so I was wondering if you could kind of tell us a little more about what Redwood is before we kind of dive into this. Yeah, I think the React on Rails title gets you like 90% of the way there, but then you're going to be very wrong about that last 10%. <laughs> so it is a what we call a full stack serverless framework, which just means it's a, a full stack in the sense that you have a front end and your back end. So it's not just like a create React app. You also have another folder with an API that has like a GraphQL schema and a Prisma schema, which is like this ORM thing. So all this kind of backend stuff, which um, I don't think we're going to get super into. I think we'll be working more so in the, in the web side today, but that's kind of the main the main deal. And then we say it's serverless because it gets deployed on two services like Netlify or Vercel, and then uses things like AWS Lambda under the hood. So it's a lot of tech that goes into it and like making it work. That takes like a long time to explain. But the really important thing you gotta know is that the whole idea is that you, it gives you your entire project and that one person could create that project. Now, what that means then is that one person is responsible for everything. They're responsible for the entire site, front to back, every single part of it. So you're no longer allowed to just skimp on accessibility. You can't push that off to another department and say like, oh, I'm not going to worry about accessibility. Like the, the front end person needs to worry about access or whatever, you know, whoever gets saddled with it in, in a company that you don't have that, that option. So I think it's really important that people building apps with Redwood, they know at least like the basics of how to, how to look through their app and figure out, you know, is this, is this accessible or not? So I think it's really important for full stack engineers in particular to not skip this step <laughs> and so yeah that's that's kind of what i would like to to do here and then what i would really like to do is kind of look through the the tutorial with you going back to what i was saying about the mental model of accessibility is i really enjoy just getting to like ask you questions about how you think about accessibility and what is the things that you look for when you look at a website and how, how do you test it and and all of those kind of things and we've also talked about how tutorials don't necessarily set people up for accessible websites. And that a lot of times people will follow along with a tutorial 
and if it's a good story, hopefully they'll get to the end and they'll have something, you know, completed. And but it may just be like a very, very bare minimum, minimum viable product. It may just be something that just barely functions. And ideally, you could have a tutorial that could get someone to the end. And not only do they have a functioning working project, but it also has things like accessibility in it. And that those things have been thought about ahead of time so that they can follow along with the tutorial, learn it, but then also have all of these best practices baked into it as well. Absolutely. Um, yeah, there, there's there's kind of this, this metaphor that I love, which is the uh, pit of success. Um, Anthony, are you familiar with that metaphor? Yeah, that's a big, uh, I think that might even come from Rails, actually. <laughs> I know that's the thing that they talked a lot about in the, in the Rails world. Yeah, the, the pit of success, the idea being that you want to give developers mm -hmm. the best chance of succeeding by providing them with the best conventions and the best tools and the best framework, ideally, which is a combination of tools that allows them to build in a way that feels natural and comfortable, but that doesn't result in all these corners getting cut along the way. For sure, for sure. Um, and we actually have, um, okay, thank you. Uh, so Chan's posted the the link to the po uh, Coding Horror um, blog post on uh, Pit of Success. Um, and additionally, my good friend Isabel is mentioning tutorials with clickable divs, right? Like this is an experience I've had where when I was first learning React, um, I went through a pretty well-known uh, video course um, that, you know, took you through everything React. Um, I had the opportunity to revisit it like a year later when I was uh, helping some new developers learn React. And um, in that year, I, I got to kind of like look and see really like, you know, how does, how does that video course line up with how I'm actually doing um, React on a day-to-day -day basis? And I found with my horror, like I found with just, absolute absolute horror that um the tutorial was recommending um absolutely inaccessible practices the one that comes to mind is like using clickable divs to pretend to be buttons um i i really do think like um education has this really really unique role um uh, where where it can really set the tone for um you know what new developers are going to prioritize right you mentioned for instance, your boot camp experience, where um, uh, where your boot camp just straight up did not teach you the thing. They they kind of told you like, hey, you should know this, but they didn't teach you a thing. And my um, my guess is that quite a few of your fellow boot campers probably walked away with the impression of like, okay, this might be a nice to know, but it isn't a need to know. This isn't a priority. Um, like the impression that like accessibility is not the priority here. Would you, would you say that that's kind of an accurate assessment? Yeah. I would say if it was, if it was a priority, then they would have taught it to us. Like from, from their point of view, if they saw it as a priority, then they would have taught it to us. So by not teaching it to us, they were implicitly saying, we don't see this as, as important as the rest of the curriculum. Absolutely. All right. So I want to dive in, but first we actually kind of missed something I wanted to do, which was uh, have you tell me more a bit about yourself and your history, um, especially as it pertains to education. Yeah, totally. And I've done a million podcast interviews. So if people want to learn about me, there's a lot of resources to do it now. Um, I am someone who came from a teaching background. So this is why, you know, education is very passionate for me. And it's one of the things I've really enjoyed about this community that we've been building in the React Discord. This is how you and I have gotten to know each other, the React Discord from Michael Chan, the excellent Michael Chan. He has been really, really putting together this fantastic community of people mm -hmm. who want to learn together, who want to teach each other. And we've been doing lots of live events and things like that. And that's kind of what got us here. But um, I was a music teacher. So as you can see in this picture on screen with my giant violin, as I like to say. It is a upright bass or a string bass or a double bass. Uh, it has many terms. It is not a cello. <laughs> and I spent a year teaching high school band. So doing like the whole marching band thing and, and all that kind of stuff, you know, went to football games and led the band and, and did all that. And you know, it was cool. And there's, there's a lot of things I, I appreciate about the whole march wind band kind of, kind of culture, but it, it wasn't really for me. I kind of came up more through, uh, like a rock band, like garage band, like metalhead kind of kind of scene. That was actually what got me into music. And I came to love, you know, classical music and jazz and, and all of this stuff. I love all genres of music, but like just, I never really had a passion for for wind ensemble. So it was hard for me to like get up every day, like teach that to like a group of kids who like all playing instruments I didn't even know how to play, you know. And 
I then spent four years running a performing arts summer camp and it's called U camps and it's <laughs> may not exist anymore because this whole this whole pandemic situation so see about that but it was a uh so general performing arts summer camp so you have acting film music dance i did the music portion as a as like a workshop leader we had a rock band workshop where we would basically get a group of like you know 20 or so kids put them in like you know four bands and about five kids or so there'd be like a guitarist bass player a drummer a singer keys and we would just give them a, a cover song to learn so it could be like a beatles song or it could be like you know a more modern kind of song like whatever whatever the kids are into these days and uh then we would spend the week teaching them the song and at the end of the week we put on a big rock concert and so everyone would get to play their songs and we like do a little little mini set and yeah so i did that for like four years but um i was actually doing like admin work like the camp you know was a couple weeks during the summer and then the rest of the year you'd like plan the camp mm -hmm. and you know take payments and you know book the buses and so i wasn't really that into admin work i learned a lot about like how to run a company and how to run events and how to do all sorts of stuff so i, I learned a ton but I wanted to get to something a little more creative and something that just kind of gelled more with like what I like to do on a day-to-day -day basis. And I found my way to coding uh, first through uh, kind of machine learning, data science type stuff is what I was first trying to learn for about a year and struggled with that and eventually kind of pivoted to uh, web dev and JavaScript. And then I went through the, the boot camp. It was a Lambda school, which is a remote boot camp that has an income share agreement. And I learned a ton of React. It was like a very, very React heavy boot camp. And after that, I started getting involved in Redwood JS, which we already talked about a little bit about. And I've, I started learning Redwood JS around May and started really taking it seriously and writing about it in June. And then they invited me onto like the contributors team around like September, I think. And then I was invite onto the core team in, in December. So right now I'm on core. Core is 12 members. There's the four member founding team and then the 12 member core team. So that that's is awesome. where I'm currently at today. That's that's super cool. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, one of the things I've really appreciated about you, Anthony, is that um, whenever you learn a thing, you immediately turn around and share that thing. Um, mm -hmm. So y'all, please go follow Anthony on Twitter at AJC Web Dev. You're going to learn so much. You're going to learn alongside Anthony. It's great. Um, the other thing I'm going to recommend is that y'all follow him on Dev2 because he's also pretty active at uh, sharing. I'm working to make my dev posts more accessible. Right now, some of them aren't great. I've got like screenshots of codes and some of them, like mm. I'm working to make all, all of this better. So just like fair warning about some of my blogging. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Um, and then uh, one last thing to share uh, from you is we're going to share the, uh, you're, you're a podcast host. Um, yeah. So you run the FS Jam podcast that's uh, short for Full Stack Jam Stack, I understand. Um, it's great. I listened to your recent episode with Swix. Um, it's phenomenal. I, I learned a lot from it. So y'all, please go check out Anthony on all the things. He's great at learning things. He's great at sharing what he learns. It's incredible. Um, and yeah, and, and finally, um, this is not going to be really a tutorial about Redwood JS. This is not going to be an introduction to Redwood JS. However, you've already done an introduction to Redwood JS on Twitch. Um, on the Learn with Jason show, so I am going to share that link as well. Um, please yeah, go check this out. Fun. You actually were hanging out. You got a, a couple posts in the chat there yes. while we were doing this. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, also, what Learn with Jason? Totally, totally not an inspiration for some antics here. Um, please go check it out. It's it's incredible. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and and dive into the uh, Redwood uh, docs. Specifically, we're going through the tutorial today, right? Yeah, so first let's just real quick, real quick talk about uh, Redwood has this idea called tutorial driven development. The idea being that the tutorial is kind of like the centerpiece of the project in a lot of ways. And they put a lot of work into making sure that the tutorial is very well written, it's very clear, and it has a good sequence of steps to progressively reveal the framework to you. And as we were saying before, the a tutorial that is really well done even if you go into it totally cold, you can get to the end of it and have like a full deployed project. And that's, that's what I did. That's what almost everyone who goes through 
Redwood and kind of learns it does. They kind of go through the tutorial. Even people don't like tutorials very much, I find. Still, even the Redwood tutorial, they'll, they'll go through just because, like, it just kind of sucks you in. It's hard. It's, once you start it, it's hard not to just, like, keep going. Mm -hmm. And, um, but that's why, you know, I think it's really important that we make sure we, we audit it in for these types of, you know, accessibility things. So, yeah, so if you just click start the tutorial, I think that should get you just to the very first step. The first couple of pages are just going to be text. And it's just kind of giving you the, the hello, we're Redwood. Here's like our, you can go to our readme on our GitHub if you want, or you can like watch these videos. These videos are kind of deprecated. If you follow along part three, you'll hit a, a breaking change with the, with the forms. But um, we're going to be just going through the, mm -hmm. the docs, like in the, in, we're going to go through the tutorial in the docs, which is constantly being iterated and updated. So that's the, that's kind of the canonical version you, you want to follow along. I originally followed the, the video tutorial back when it like first came out, but mm -hmm. if you do that, you'll hit a, a couple of roadblocks. <laughs> video material, and I say this fully aware that I am actively creating video material right now. Video material is hard, right? Because yeah. the moment like one thing is like becomes out of date, like you have to re-record everything and right like what do you re-record do you just edit it to include a little pop-up that says like hey this part is wrong do this instead um i'm reminded of kent c dodds um after like because kent c dodds launched his epic react dev um site and then uh just a few weeks later uh the react 17 announcement came out and React 17 was like, hey, you no longer have to import React from React. And Ken's like, are you kidding me? I have a whole video archive that's just nothing but import React from React. Uh, I've imported React from React over 9,000 times in my life. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, and, and it's just like hard. Like there's that balance of like, what do you update? And I find like docs are a lot more flexible in that regard. So, um, yeah, we're we're gonna be going through the the docs, and we might not go through all the docs because, like you've mentioned, there's definitely like a a full stack uh, element to this, and that means that there's going to be some backend um, tutorials as well. Um, and and those backend tutorials probably aren't going to be the most relevant or helpful for us when we're talking about recommending web accessibility best practices. Um, oh, and yeah, we do have to have. Where, where it says our first page, that's going to be where we're going to start getting like actually HTML and like what we what we want to start looking through. Cool. So that you just to skip over the installation, of the file structure stuff, that's not going right. to be super relevant. Looks so like we, we have, start off real quick. It looks okay. like we do have another uh, Redwood core team member uh, in the chat uh, saying we're thinking after uh, version 1.0 is live, I'll re-record these tutorial videos. Uh, part one and make new ones for part two. That's right, because this is a, a two-part tutorial. You have yeah, that must be Rob. Then sounds like yeah, yeah. This is definitely where there's like a lot of a lot of stuff happening right now with the the tutorial as we call it. Oh god, the, you, you, what was it? Redwoods Revenge, I think. <laughs> that's on par with like the Sharknado naming scheme. Are you familiar with the Sharknado naming scheme? Um. Like, I don't think I am. Actually. Okay, uh, this is incredible. We need to take the segue, y'all. I'm sorry, this is so important to me. Um, there are six Sharknado movies. Uh, it's Sharknado, Sharknado Two, the second one, uh, Sharknado Three. Oh hell no, Sharknado: The Fourth Awakens, uh, Sharknado Five: Global Swarming, and then Sharknado Six. Of course, has two different names. One of which is um, uh, the last Sharknado, and the other is Sharknado Six. It's about time, which is important because uh, this is the Sharknado movie that introduces time travel. Um, so it's incredible, y'all. Um, and I'm glad to see Redwood picking up the spirit of uh, the best sequel names, for sure. Yeah, I think um, Rob is a, a big fan of retro films, so I think he's inspired by the, some of the naming schemes that were a, little more, a bit more in vogue back in the 80s. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, uh, cool. So we are on this uh, this our first page page, which is going to be our first page. Um, and uh, yeah, just kind of, I guess, walk me through like, as, as you're looking at this, like, what are some of the things you're worried about? Like, what are some of the things you're like, we might not have gotten this one right? Yeah, so when you generate uh, a page, it spits out uh, that home page for you right there. And yep, so there, if you keep going down a little bit, there'll be the actual code for that. Uh, let's see, yeah, let's actually have to go to the next page, I think, and then we'll see the, the code for that. All right. Oh, actually. 
Okay. Yeah, this actually, now that I'm thinking about this, this actually might be better for us to to run the commands okay. and actually get this stuff. So it looks like it's not always going to show us exactly what HTML is being spat. It's been a while. So I've no actually problem. just like read through this thing. I've kind of, <laughs> I've started to basically like internalize the tutorial to the extent where I like have done it live so many times that <laughs> I forget kind of what the original one is. But yeah. So yeah, let's just uh, generate, uh, so yarn space create space and then redwood dash app yep space and then period forward slash and then just give it the name of your project and then while that's going let's just go back look at the docs real quick because that's going to take a minute sure. and so let's just look right right here so this would be kind of the first thing i would want to know is like how does this HTML look like? We've got an H1, we've got a nav, we've got a main. So I think it's not too bad, but it's like, how, like how, how semantic is this HTML, I guess would be my first question. So this is already loads, loads better than um, a lot of the tutorials I've seen. Um, oh, that's, that's good to hear. Yeah, because I was hoping that like we wouldn't be terrible. I knew we wouldn't be perfect, but I know that mm. this has we put a little bit of thought into this already. So that's that's good to hear. For sure, I'm gonna maybe uh, zoom into this because it's kind yeah, of what yes, we're we're right, looking yeah. at here. Um, yeah, so I can see, for instance, that you've got a header element already loads better uh, than than the tutorials that are out there for a lot of web dev stuff. You've also got a nav element which has an unordered list, which has a list item, which is pretty cool. Um, navs don't, if, if I'm understanding this correctly, navs don't have to have unordered lists, but like unordered lists are a pretty helpful way to structure the content inside a nav. So it works either way. Um, what would be another way that you would structure a nav? Uh, a nav with just a bunch of link children, a bunch of anchor tags inside of it could be another so way. Be, that... So just be the nav, yeah, just about, without the UL or the LI at all. Yeah. Um, I, I personally prefer to have a UL in there. I, I think that kind of like nested, like the list structure in there is, is helpful. Um, and I think my, it'd be helpful for styling it also. Yeah. My, my guess is that it's, um, a list because later in the tutorial, there's probably going to be more, uh, routes added in there would be my yeah. guess. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Right now it's, we, what we end up doing is we add a link to the, Actually, this might be a good question next. I think what we end up doing is we end up adding a link on the H1 back to the blog instead of having a, a home in the in the nav. So that actually might be a problem. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, the other thing I'm noticing is that you're you're kind of kicking off with this this H1 here for Redwood blog. Um, and my thought looking at that is um, I probably would not make this an H1 and and. The reason for that is that the H1 usually serves as the like page title rather than the site title. Um, so uh, while here we've got some generic like content, just a filler thing. So it would here. make more sense for home to be the H1 here. Yes. Is what you're saying. Yeah, like okay. an H1 followed by a bunch of paragraph tags here. Um, yeah, uh, and this is because the. Um, Headings are, like, the H1 through H6 tags are used to create what is effectively a document outline. Like, you can almost think about, like, if you were writing an essay and you needed to, ahead of time, like, your teacher's asking you to turn in that outline for your, your essay, um, that, uh, that outline is going to be, like, a bunch of, like, nested bullet points, right? And um, those nested bullet points are effectively the document outline that we're talking about here. And so usually the title of your essay, in this case, is not necessarily Redwood blog. The title of your essay is likely home. Uh, so yeah, I would maybe uh, make this like just a, a general link inside the nav or, or it wouldn't even necessarily have to be in the nav. Um, but yeah, that is, that is something I would do. Uh, while we're kind of talking about this uh, nav section, you don't have a whole lot in your nav, and that's totally fine, um, especially kind of starting out. Uh, yeah, also the idea is that yeah. this is your, we're building out a blog here, so you went, we like add a contact form at one point, so that ends up being an, another link. So that's why yeah. we kind of build up the links as we build up the project. Absolutely. Um, and, and one of the kind of like uh, consequences of emergent design is as your site goes on and on, your nav is inherently going to accrue more and more links, right? Like this is just a, a fundamental problem. Um, 
And so if we can imagine someone who's uh, like a keyboard navigator is like tabbing their way through the page, right? They, they tab through all of the links in the nav, and then they reach like the, the main content down here, right? Um, and that's the content that they're, inter uh, that they're actually interested in. Let's imagine that this user then clicks a link to go to a different route on the site. If, the, uh, if their focus starts off at the beginning, then that means they have to go through the whole nav again. And um, when the nav is as small as this, that's probably fine. Uh, but when navs get bigger, you would likely want to introduce what's called a skip link. Um, and, and the skip link is you would add like an ID to your main tag here. So it'd be like ID equals main content or something like that. Um, and then you would just have a, an anchor tag up here. Like it would be the absolute first focusable element in the, um, in the document. And it would say something like skip to content and the link would be in like an anchor down to the, the main. Um, so yeah, I'm, yeah, so I've never, I've never even heard of that. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the first time I've even heard that term. Yeah, uh, so that that's great. Um, let let's, me uh, yeah, let's show let's you. I've actually uh, implemented a skip link on my blog here. Um, so this is benmyers.dev, um, and I don't have all that much in my um, in my nav either. As you can see, it's basically like I've got the uh, logo up here. I've got an about. I've got a Twitter, right? But if I hit tab. You can actually see that the first thing that shows up, this is a, a link that has been set to be visually hidden until it's focused. Um, so that's something that a lot of people um, will do when they're building a, a skip link. And if I were to like, you know, hit enter on this thing, um, yeah, I guess it would, yeah, it, it took me actually to the, the heading, which probably should add a focus outline for. Uh, let's uh, Do the accessibility audit for your, web your website next. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Um, we have a question from Chan in the chat about how do I prefer to mark up the site name. So typically, the site name is actually going to be a link. Um, and sorry, let me let me take us back here to the tutorial. Typically, this is going to be a link, right? Because you want to be able to click it, and it takes you back home. Um, and so that would be the important thing. But also, in kind of the practical, real-world um, application of, like, building a website, typically what you have in here is a logo, right? And that's going to be an image. So um, having a link with an image tag inside of it, and that image tag has an alt of home or something like that, um, would be a, a fairly standard way to mark up the like site name. Uh, so you said a link with an image tag in the link and then an alt on that image. Yeah, and that alt would be something like, home um uh, yeah uh cool so, so our project will be generated now so we can just go back to our first page and just start like kind of following along with the with the commands yeah so let's get yeah. our project up so cd into your directory 32 seconds man Ooh. you got a fast computer <laughs> <laughs> let's go ahead and pop this open yeah, I'm actually gonna be. I'm on a 2014 MacBook right now, but I'm about to be upgrading very soon, thankfully. Getting that M1. All right. Um. Cool. Walk me through uh what you want me to go ahead and do next. Yeah. Let's uh just go ahead and kick off our dev server so we can you know see what we're doing. So yarn, R W D E V. Oh. Yeah. So everything's gonna start with yarn R W for yarn Redwood. Right? So you don't have to install the the CLI globally. All right. And then it's going to pop you up on localhost 8910. I think it will open a browser window for you automatically. Yeah, Maybe it not. Ahead and... Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Yeah, it opened off screen here. Let me go ahead and just copy paste this in. There we go. Cool. Pretty rad. So that's just the splash page. So it's not, this This like disappears once you start building your product. So let's not kind of worry about that okay. too much. So let's go back to the tutorial and let's just like follow along with the commands. So if you just copy that command there, that's going to generate your home page. Uh, should I kill the dev server first, or just uh, keep the dev server on and then open a terminal? Yeah, just open another terminal exactly. Yeah. All right. Yeah, and then you go ahead and fire that up, and then if we look back at our uh, project, yeah, ideally, if we can, if you can get the just. You're only going to need to see a little bit of that, so if you want to just have that like uh, all the way to the right, and then with your code on the left, then we can see both at the same time. Yeah, let's do that. Um, you're not going to need really your... Actually, you, you will need your terminal for a couple more commands. 
But um, yeah, if you want to pop open a terminal in your VS Code editor or or just kind of figure out how you want your screen to look, either, either way. We'll do it you're, this way. You're the, you're the streamer, so. Living do, life do on how, the how edge. Please. Uh, if, uh, if, if this isn't working for y'all, let me know in the, the chat. I, I expect. I can probably uh, increase the, the font a little bit on both the browser and the and your editor as well. All right, that's totally fair. Oh, too much. That's gonna be a little yeah. yeah. Yeah, that, that's probably okay. Yeah. yeah. And then if we go to our web folder, we can see the actual code for this home page. SRC pages home page. Uh, there you go. The so the one. Yeah. All right. So it starts you off with uh H1 and P tag and then just like a link in there. So this is kind of setting you up for what is eventually going to be that layout that we were looking at. So what you kind of do is you start by generating a home page, and then you start by generating an about page, and then it shows you how to like link between the two of them. But then they're like, "Oh, just kidding! Actually, we can do this with the layout." So we can kind of just skip straight to the let's let's first do this. Let's do the next command to generate our home our about page. Okay. Yeah. So it's so go to that. So go all the way to the bottom. All the way to the bottom. Okay. And and then hit, so not not that, and then hit next. Yeah, so then this is our about page. So this will generate our cool. next page. Look at that. Yeah. And then I think then after that, you just, the next one was the was the layout. Okay. Um, is Sarah, is that on this page? It's on the next actually, page? Actually, no, let's, yeah, so let's go. So before that, actually, let's go back and just go, let's just go through it, how, how it's written. So, okay. so first, it's going to have you take this whole thing, so copy that and yeah. put that into your home page. All right, um, the site should update. Yep, there, there we go. go. Cool. And then if you click the about, it'll take you to the about page, but we don't have a link back to our home page. So then you have a little in the next part of this. The so then go back to the tutorial. Mm -hmm. Yep, and then go down, keep going. Yep, and then paste that into your about page. Cool. Sir, starting to feel like I should have allotted a little more uh, room to the browser stuff. Okay, uh, about yeah. page, yep, yeah. boom. And then now, if we go back to our about page, yep, and then we're already on the about page. Yeah. So if then you can click return home to return home. Yep, there you go. Cool. And so then what they have you do is they have you abstract out those links into the layout. Okay. So that's why I'm not too concerned about how the code looks right now, because once we get to the layout, that's where things actually is like important and it's going to kind of stick. So go to go back to the tutorial. Sure thing. Yep. And then scroll all the way down and go to the next page. And then this will give us keep going and it will give you a command to generate the layout. Yep. So many excellent commands this is incredible um uh so in case you haven't seen redwood uh first of all i understand that this uh this redwood part here you could use rw as a shortcut for that um and then this g is an abbreviation for generate so it's this whole chain of like you're running yarn yarn is running the redwood generate command to create a new layout and that layout is called block yep and, and before Instead of layout, it just said pages. So we have a lot of yarn redwood generate commands. And so, yeah, so that will generate the layout. Are and... we close to the point where I can hide my terminal so we can have a little more room? Um, or is yeah, yeah, that, at this point, yeah, that, that should be good. I don't think we're gonna, the next stuff is gonna be all like the, Let's... Uh, the Prisma database stuff. So, yeah, this, this will get us pretty far. We just, there we go. Cool. All right. So now, yeah, let's go to the layout. So the okay. above pages. Yeah, blog, blog layout. layout. Blog and this has layout. been newly generated for us. And yeah. it's just a, a fragment that returns the, the children. So this is a wrapper around an individual page, right? We The page stuff mm -hmm. effectively slots in right here. And so we could add a whole bunch of stuff. Like I think the tutorial mentions the, the header. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So let's go. Uh, back over to the left, and then scroll down a little bit in the tutorial. Okay, I'll and, look at that. Yeah, and so then this is what we were looking at before, yeah. So as you see, we have the, the header and then the main. And so 
what we do is, yeah, go ahead and put that in the blog layout. Oh, maybe I... Uh... Make sure to get the, yeah. Yep. Yeah, and so, and this is something we should talk about just real quickly is getting Redwood to really the level of accessibility we need is going to require some things in the router that I don't quite understand yet. So if there's anyone here who knows a lot about how routers work and how accessibility works, like we could use your help. <laughs> and it's one of those things where you and I have talked about this a little bit, mm -hmm. uh, like Marcy Sutton has written about this in terms of like routing in Gatsby. And like right now, if you go to like kind of Redwood's like PRs about this, it's like, here's some links to what Marcy has said about this mm -hmm. and we need to figure this out. <laughs> and so, yeah, that's kind of where we're at right now with that and what, the reason why I want to do this because I see this kind of like more of the meta level of like how do you build uh, accessible websites with Redwood, but in terms of like Redwood itself being accessible is also something that we're still working on and looking for uh, contributions if anyone happens to have that sort of Ab expertise. Absolutely. Um, quick question. Why, like I, I know a lot of like frameworks around React, a lot of like React's meta frameworks will introduce their own link component. Um, can you help me understand, uh, like, what Redwood's link is doing? Is it working similarly to, like, the React router link, the Gatsby um, link, next link? Let's go to Redwood Docs and find out. <laughs> there, there will be um, a specific page for the Redwood right. router. So if you just Google Redwood JS router, or it's the in the Docs page towards the bottom. Uh, there we go. This looks like it. Redwood router. Okay. Yep. And then just figure out, just go down to the, let's see, there we go. Yeah, so link and named route functions, I think is what, what okay. you're going to want. Yeah, so this is one of the things, um, you know, this framework was built long before I <laughs> came along. So there's a lot of stuff in terms of like how the router was created, how it's working, that I'm still learning, kind of picking up as as we go. So. Sure. I don't know exactly what what the the link component is doing. It's always just worked for me, so I've never had to worry about what the link component mm -hmm. is. As far as thinking about these frameworks and having all the magic is when the magic works, you never really have to figure <laughs> out what the magic does. And then once the magic breaks is when you have to figure out <laughs> what sure. it's doing. So yeah, so. Um, so uh, if I had to take a guess, it's probably working uh, and it may even under the hood be, be leveraging like React Router's link or something, but because this is a single yeah, it's, page. It's not. I can't I can say for sure that it was a new router built okay. from scratch. It's super not cool. importing any other router. Super I can't cool. say that for sure. Uh, super cool. So yeah, um, single page applications. Um, if you use just a, a pure anchor tag um, without overriding any of their default behavior or anything like that, um, then you're going to get like a hard page load, which is difficult in a single page application because um, the thing that makes single page apps super cool um, and the, I guess the optimization that they provide is uh, the bundle's already there. So you shouldn't have to do a hard uh, page load. Um, you shouldn't have to go fetch the new page. You're, you're just already taken, like you've already got that there on the browser. Um, so it's, I guess, to prevent the hard, uh, hard refresh, hard new page load. Uh, it looks like, uh, yeah, it looks like we've got uh, some code in the, um, in the chat for the link component, which is super cool. Um, uh, cool. So maybe I can deviate a little off script and we can, oh, I believe you're on mute, my friend. Sorry, yes, I, wasn't, I wasn't saying anything. Ah, uh, you're good. So, <laughs> so uh, if, if I were, if I were interested in creating a skip link, um, let me, I guess, try to do what I can. And then, uh, you can let me know if maybe I'm using links wrong here. Um, but what I would first do first, actually, let's yeah. first get the blog layout into oh, yeah, our sure. into our page before yeah. we start doing any Makes of that, sense. just so we can also see our see what we're doing there. Cool. So, um, do do? let's go back to the the tutorial. Yeah, uh, right here. Yeah. So that's all good, and then it's going to yeah. So right there, that's going to be your home page. And so what you do is you the, the layout is then a component, and you bring in the component and you wrap the the content. So as you see here, we're taking that blog layout and we're just wrapping the little home right there. And you're not going to need the link. You're not going to need to import link and routes anymore because they are in our layout now. Dig it. There are a few things more satisfying than removing an import. Blog layout. Um, 
and I guess you've already got an H1, don't you? Um, yeah, so I'll just do home, like the tutorial says. Yeah, and then scroll down just a little bit, and it'll be same thing for your about page. All right. Actually, copy paste this. Actually, sorry, there. So let's just skip that because it's good to have you change that. Keep going. Okay. Keep yeah. going. Keep going. Keep going. Um, yeah, just, keep, well, oh, a little keep bit going. more, a little bit more. Cool. Yeah, that, that's what you want. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> cool, cool, cool. I dig it. Yeah, so what they do is they, they kind of walk you through, like, why, like, why you, why you're able to take the links out because they're in the layout. So it's like, like I said, the, the story does a really good job, like, walking you through it so you actually, like, understand what's happening. Mm -hmm. So you can kind of skip a couple steps if you know where you're already going. <laughs> that's fair. Okay, so that should be good. Let's go back and just look at the site now, and we should be able to just navigate between um two. hi make sure you've saved everything yeah i don't think we pulled in there was a bit in the the header i think that we were supposed to add there, at the very like top of this page i think cool. there was um yeah. adding a link somewhere uh, yeah actually yeah, no, i know i know what you're talking about yeah so scroll down yeah. uh where has it a little gone? bit more Aha. right there yeah look at that yes. yeah so that's so that's the final blog layout yeah Oh, that's big. Um, cool. Yeah. So now, as I was saying, the the H one. Yeah, we made that the link, and and so what you're saying though, that's that's actually a good thing though. You want to have that one link at the top that takes you back to home. It sounds like. Yeah, and I would say that's a pretty common pattern too, right? Just yeah. um, I I wouldn't necessarily wrap it in in H one because the the name of this page is not. Uh, likely to be Redwood blog. The name of the page is likely. Cool. Yeah. So at this point, like, let's just start changing stuff. Like, okay. let's let's take the code we have and like see what you what you would do to it, and then we'll kind of see where the code lands lands at the end. For sure. Um. Yeah. So I'm gonna remove this this H one here. Um. And uh, the auto save. Uh, the auto format on save is pretty great. Um. Yeah. So I would I would go ahead and add a, a skip link to this. Um. And the way that I would do that, um, it may actually correct the, the formatting here, but the uh, I would add an ID here. I'm just going to call this main. Oh, yeah, it did correct. Cool. Um, and then link. Cool. Exciting. Uh, so I would put something descriptive in here, like skip to content. Um, and this would go to... And I put my my guess is I could put a um a yeah so so the way this works is if you look at the link below how you have routes dot home inside the the brackets so that's yeah. what's happening here every time we generate a, a page it has a name so it's a, like a named route and that's we call it a named route function so that's why it's routes dot home with the parentheses it's a okay. function that links you to your home so. All right, and can I can I just do a string like this? Let's find out. <laughs> All right, uh, skip to yeah, it does does look like that's doing it. Um, I'm not sure. Maybe it's doing like a hard load. Um, if 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 I'm wrong there, uh, let me know in the chat. Would super appreciate that. Um, looks like we've got some comments. With the way the router is currently built, the whole page has to reload because the layout is used inside the page. We can't persist the layout between pages because the hierarchy is reversed. We're working on fixing that. Uh, you'll be able to define the layout that should wrap your route so that if two routes use the same layout, the layout will persist and only the page content itself will swap out. That's super cool. Um, that strikes me as a single page applications working in, in much the way we would expect a single page app to work. Um, when that you happens, break that break that down a little bit, what, what you just read, you kind of read that fast. I'm, I don't oh. think all the listeners necessarily got all that. Um, yeah, I absolutely. <laughs> Um, so currently, uh, we have two pages that are using the, uh, blog layout that we've created here. Um, and, and currently the way the Redwood router is working is it's not smart enough to really know that they're, that both of these pages use the same layout. Um, that's because the layouts are like treated as children of the pages. Um, and that means that every time, um, Every time you navigate between pages, even if the layout that you're using is the same, it's having to 
uh, render a whole new version of the layout. Um, and uh, that could, depending on your site, uh, that could be inefficient, right? Um, and, and it might or might not be what you want. So it sounds like future versions of the router um, will hopefully be smart enough to know like, oh, you're reusing this layout and therefore we don't have to change anything about that. We can just re-render what changed. Yeah, yeah, this is what I was saying, how there's there's stuff in the internals of the router that, like I said, are still being worked on. And uh, it was a little bit above, above my head right now. Sure. But um, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, that's super cool. And yeah, it, as, as I'm hearing like, oh, the layout uh, might not re-render. Like my first thought is like, oh God, the focus management on that is going to be rough. Um, because when a, um, when you're on like a static site where every page is just like, it's its own static HTML page. Uh, when you go from one page to another, that's like, that's a hard page load. Right. Um, and so a screen reader in that case will usually announce something like the document title. Um, which actually is an interesting point. We haven't done anything with document titles in here. Maybe that's something I should follow up on next. But um, yeah, so uh, the screen reader announces the document title, and that's usually how the screen reader user uh, knows that they're now on a new page. Um, but in a single page application, you're not actually ever leaving the HTML page that you're on. Things are just kind of changing around you. Um, and that means that you don't get the document title announcement. You don't get any of the new page stuff. Um, you And you, even your focus might not change um, if the component, if the link that you clicked on doesn't re-render at all. Um, so this is why routers for single page applications are incredibly difficult. It's because you have to like figure out like, what, is, what are the sensible defaults for announcing to assistive technology users um, or managing focus uh, announcing to them that um, their page has changed. Yeah, there's so much that goes into the router. I feel like it's like such a black box to to most people. Maybe I just need to get like Marcy Sutton on somehow and just be like, please teach me everything about routers ever, please. Because uh, she did. I would, great... that would definitely be an episode I would want to watch. <laughs> she did some great work uh, with that uh, when she was working at Gatsby. Uh, let me get a link to that. Uh, in the meantime, do you know, does um, does Redwood have anything for head management? Because I'm noticing like, hey, as we navigate uh, between pages, it doesn't look like my title up here. My, my title doesn't seem to be changing at all. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a good question. I, I mean, I'm, sh I'm sure there is. Um, like we don't have like, we don't have like a head tag, like next has. I know we don't have that, but I'm sure there's a way to do it. Um, yeah, hopefully Rob is still in the, in the chat. He could, I'm sure he'd be able to answer that. Let me just check the docs real quick. All right, and I'll check it over here as well. Uh, Red, it feels like it would be part of the router. Um, let's see, Redwood Head. I'm going to get so many trees. Um, eh, dinosaur, dinosaur, slab, uh, dinosaur head slab. Words are hard. Um, always, always down for more dinosaurs. Uh, let's see. Redwood, Redwood JS head in here. Well, the uh, first non-redwoodjs.com uh, link here is AJC Web Dev, which sounds familiar. Yeah, I... Quite monopolized I, SEO around Redwood. <laughs> <laughs> you are become the Redwood instructor. Um, yeah, so I guess as, as someone who's, who's looking at this, like, hey, we've got different pages going on in a uh, React single page app, um, as someone who's looking at this from an accessibility perspective, like I'm kind of curious, like uh, where where would someone find the head management stuff? Because maybe maybe that's something that's like not super straightforward to get into with like the beginner tutorial like first steps, mm -hmm. but it is something that maybe shouldn't be left off the table. Yeah, totally. Yeah, no, I, I agree, and and I feel like it it should be somewhere in the docs. I just don't know where, but if if not, that's something we'll definitely add. And that is like very very important for sure and that's a these are exactly kind of the kind of notes i was mm -hmm. i was hoping to get from this so that's that's great absolutely um cool uh anything anything else you could think of any anywhere anywhere that um as because i know you've given a whole lot of these um like redwood introductions where do people go next like where do they i guess deviate from the tutorials to build their own thing 
That's a great question. <laughs> um, it's yeah, it's really gonna gonna depend on kind of what people want to build with it because you know you know we say this a lot is that we're showing you this blog to help teach people mm -hmm. Redwood, but like, honestly, no one really uses Redwood to build a blog. And, and if you do, like you probably shouldn't, <laughs> it's not mm -hmm. really like what it's, what it's made for. So I think most people are going to kind of go through the tutorial and like figure out how it works. And mm -hmm. then they're either going to kind of start from scratch again, or they're just going to like kind of take the finished project and start changing stuff okay so in terms of like where we are right now in the in the tutorial like the next kind of stuff is going to be like all the database stuff and that's stuff that you're sure. saying isn't really isn't really uh relative right now so um i would say what we should do is we should go look at the finished blog and yeah. see how that looks okay. and then because that's kind of what this ends you up at so if you go if you just search um uh redwood uh example blog yeah how about this one? That's the one. All right. Uh, is this like hosted anywhere? Uh, yeah. Go Oops, ahead. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, so this is what Rob built built out. Like once he was, he kind of like he did the tutorial, and then he also kind of like made a a cool like you made it look nice and did all that kind of stuff. So hopefully, like color contrast and things like that are good. But that's kind of what we can look at more so with this now. Let's find out. And, um, and then the repo is just all there if you want us to start poking into the code. All right uh yeah so there's i'm I'm just kind of surveying getting a, a good sense of what's yep. going on here um all the different things that uh that i'm seeing um this is really nicely done it looks great Matt, well, probably very happy to hear that <laughs> uh oh you know what uh so the first thing i'm noticing is that i see a continue reading link um and I'm going to actually pull up, I'm going to put this to the test and pull up voiceover. Uh, voiceover on Chrome, hammer review, Google Chrome, some leaving hammer, link, steal, link, link, continue reading, article. You are currently on a link. To click this link, press. Okay, so when I navigate First to off, this. What, what tool, what tool is this? How do, how do we get this? <laughs> this is incredible. Uh, so this is voiceover. Voiceover is a screen reader. Specifically, it's a screen reader that's built into Mac. Um, I want to say currently usage statistics for voiceover are like 10% of screen reader users are using voiceover. Um, the vast majority of screen reader users use JAWS, which is a paid screen reader for Windows. Um, there's also quite a few who will use NVDA. Um, so ideally, you'd want to also test with JAWS is what yeah, you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, all screen readers are implemented uh, slightly differently, so definitely make like everything sure... Everything in tech. Like, yeah. every version of SQL is slightly no different kidding. SQL. <laughs> uh, so, when you're navigating with a screen reader, there are many modes that you can navigate with. Um, the one that, as developers, we're going to be inclined to try first is tabbing, right? Because that's how, you know, as power users of technology... Tab through your page, yeah. Yeah, that, yeah you tab through the page. Um, but there's, there's different ways you could navigate. There's... I could do what's called the virtual cursor which would take me through all the elements in this page static or interactive etc um, and then finally um i could different screen readers provide different means of going through a page um going from uh going between elements of the same type so for instance going from link to link or from button to button or from form field to form field and what you're going to see is i'm going to i'm using voiceover i'm going to do uh control option links view. menu and this opens the rotor which is voiceover's implementation of that feature and what we're going to see here is this is a list of all the links on the page um so i could go through this i'm actually going to scroll because i don't really want voiceover talking over me but um you're going to see here that we have well we've got wood seal acrylic wood seal we've got some repeated links uh, the other thing that we've got is we've got these repeated continued reading links, right? Um, and, you know, we see this pattern all the time, right? Maybe it's continued reading, maybe it's read more, maybe it's like show more. But you'll have, uh, wherever wherever you've got like this excerpt, you'll often have like a link to read the full thing. Um, and the issue with that is that uh, it doesn't provide context as to what reading more would actually give you. So when you're in a kind of context-free mode like VoiceOver's Rotor here, um, you're not actually clear what more you'd be reading. Um, 
So some people will remedy this by adding an ARIA label. So the link will say continue reading, but it'll have an ARIA label on top of it. They'll say continue reading Thor's hammer working mallet. So quick question along those lines, do you think it would be worth it for there to be ARIA labels in the Red Witch tutorial? Um, de it depends. I wouldn't use it to duplicate what's already there. You know, if you've got a link that says home, you wouldn't add an ARIA label on top of that that says home. Cool. Uh, we had the ARIA for episode two. <laughs> when I come back. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Um, ARIA is fun, but there's, there's so much you can possibly get wrong with it. Um, yeah, it's... I've I've got some blog posts about that. BenMyers.dev. Go go check them out. Aria blog posts. They're post. fantastic. <laughs> I've learned a ton about Aria from those blog posts. Mm -hmm. Um. So that's a thing I notice. Uh. Is um when you've got repeated elements like this, um, it's usually helpful to include basically some assistive technology only um versions like basically like full descriptors there um that help the link make sense even when they're taken out of context. Um. So that's that's a thing I notice. Um, another thing I notice, I'm gonna go ahead and kill voice over here. Voice over off. Is you've got some images, and if I'm looking at a tutorial with images, the first thing I'm gonna think of is oh, there's thanks. yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and inspect this. We're gonna see, uh, there is absolutely no alt text on this. Ooh, Rob, so, drop the ball. Come on, Rob. <laughs> Um, so let me let me show you what the voiceover. They're all hammers. Would they all just say hammer? <laughs> um, well, I mean that's probably information that would be supplied from the API, right? Because the API is serving as your content management system. So if you want to build a content management system that powers an accessible front end, then that means part of your content would probably also be the alt text. And that should be a field in your API side. Okay. Um, Interesting. So here's the voiceover experience when I navigate to an image without alt text. Um, By the way, are we are we stopping at eleven? Because if so, we probably could start wrapping up. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll probably uh, yeah probably start wrapping up pretty shortly uh, because I have a hard stop um, on yeah, the hour. I want to like make sure I can yeah. uh, kind of give a summary of what I have learned and what my next steps are here. Sure. What I kind of see is the the main things you've gone over is uh, some sort of skip to content would be very yeah. useful to have. Uh, the docs needs to be more clear about how to alter any of the head tags. And we need to make sure to have image or alt text kind of baked in somewhere in like how the images are coming from mm -hmm. the API or some, yeah. something like that. We need to get alt, alt, and, on, alt text. And on that, that alt is definitely an interesting problem for Redwood, right? Because Redwood is about this whole full sack thing, right? Like um, you could easily use Redwood for a content management system. Um, because it's both back end and it's tied to the front end. Um, and that means that you have to deal with content management system problems. Um, and therefore, you have all of the accessibility concerns with that too. Um, yep. So that's yep. definitely back to what we originally said at the beginning like, you know, we have a lot more problems mm -hmm. to worry about when we build the whole thing ourselves. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, yeah. So I, um, I know we didn't get through everything in the tutorial. Y'all. I would super, super appreciate if, if you wanted to go through the uh, Redwood tutorials um, yourselves and and maybe look through, see, just kind of finish the whole thing, um, see if there's different um, accessibility things that you notice. You can tweet at me at some antics dev. Uh, you can also bug Anthony about that. I know, Anthony, I'm going to volunteer Always. him to to receive all your complaints. Um, and maybe, maybe yeah, let, me, need to... let me make sure we get it. I actually made a form post for this specifically on Redwood for, for the, these types of discussions. So let me make sure you've got that link as well. Yeah, go ahead it's... and stick that in the chat if you wouldn't mind. That would be that would be awesome. Yeah, um, yeah so this is, and, and David Tearson actually even opened it up to a, a much wider meta level of like how did how is redwood as an organization going to be mm -hmm. accessible in terms of like our own home page and and all that sort of stuff so there's a lot of great discussion in there from like the super duper high levels to the very very nitty-gritty technical and so that's why i just called it making redwood js accessible mm -hmm. it's kind of a hub where we can have these these sort of discussions something i would really like to continue to to work on you know as we get closer to vp1 absolutely um Anthony, I super appreciate having you on. I would love to have you on for a part two, um, just because I know that there's so much more we could we could go into. Um, Y'all, this has been great. Um, come join us same time next week, next Tuesday at 12 p.m. CST. We're going to have Todd Libby on. Uh, Todd Libby is, uh, he's a part of the World Wide Web Consortium. He's specifically working um, nice. on the uh, new versions of the W3C accessibility guidelines. Um, the 
Dude, uh, good pickup. That's super exciting. Yeah. I'm really excited to watch uh, that. He's he's a, a super fun guy. Um, very, very funny. And and we're going to be diving into the web content accessibility guidelines together. Um, and, and also get kind of a, a look, a first look at the new WCAG 3.0 uh, public draft that's coming out. Uh, Y'all, I'm super excited. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much for, for joining us today, um, and I'll catch y'all next week. It's been real, y'all. Bye, everyone.